Uh, I am Professor Kumar Swamisundaram from Microbiology and Cell Biology Department at Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. So uh, we are talking about this project uh, funded by Safipra. Uh, this is a collaboration between my laboratory and Professor Philip Marin from France. So this project was funded about five years ago. In fact, it got over a couple of years ago. We continue to work on the leads obtained from the project. So the main objective of this project is to investigate uh, cancer stem cells. As you all know, uh, the cancer consists of the cancer cells and then the stromal cells. Uh, for a lot of time, people thought cancer cells are just only one type of cells. But uh, recent findings, probably last 10 plus years, have clearly demonstrated within the cancer cell, there are a small subpopulation of cells called cancer stem cells. And uh, these are the uh, real culprits behind the cancer development and also the progression and many other uh, you know aggressive properties of the cancer and uh, all over the world people are trying to look at uh, how the cancer stem cells differ from the so called non cancer stem cells okay and uh, by different uh, approaches okay so the approach what we took me and uh, my co principal investigator from, from France is to look at the differences between the cancer stem cells and non-cancer stem cells by looking at the differences in the uh, kind of proteins which are expressed between these two types of cells. And of course, we, our interest is to look at the glioblastoma, uh, which is uh, grade 4 glioma, one of the most common adult brain tumors. That is our uh, choice of the system to study. So uh, in this process, uh, we identified several protein molecules which are uh, expressed uh, to different levels between the cancer stem cells and the so-called non-cancer stem cells. So uh, while uh, many laboratories, including our laboratories, are trying to look at those proteins which are uh, specifically expressed by cancer stem cells, one of the proteins, which we call it uh, fibromodulin, in short it's called FMOD, which was expressed to higher levels by the so-called non-cancer stem cells which you also call it as a differentiated cancer cells. Why uh, we got interested on this molecule is that we had earlier worked on this molecule and published a paper uh, in one of the good journals called Oncogene where we found out this particular protein fibromodulin is highly expressed in glioblastoma in the context of the whole tumor. Interestingly, in this current study we found out uh, this protein is expressed only by the non-cancer stem cells, not by the cancer stem cells. Okay. This was little uh, uh, unexpected because uh, what we know about the differences between cancer stem cells and non-cancer stem cells is that cancer stem cells are the most important cell type of the cancer that they alone can initiate a tumor and maintain the tumor. To the extent the non-cancer stem cells uh, becomes kind of irrelevant and uh, they appear to form the bulk of the tumor. Okay. However, our study went on to show a molecule like fibromyelin, which is secreted or expressed only by the non-cancer stem cells or it's otherwise called differentiated cancer cells, also play an important role in the growth of the tumor, which of course originally is initiated by the cancer stem cells. So that is the main uh, finding of this paper. That is, uh, in the tumor, there are two types of cells, cancer stem cells and non-cancer stem cells, which are otherwise called differentiated cancer cells. Even though, it is all well accepted that cancer stem cells are the only one which can initiate a tumor and maintain the tumor. We here show in this project uh, that differentiated cancer cells, otherwise called non-cancer stem cells, also play an important role in uh, aiding or helping the growth of the tumor which is initiated by the cancer stem cells. In this process, we identified a molecule called fibromyelin, which is specifically expressed by non-cancer stem cells. And what we found at the level of mechanism this protein is able to work on the endothelial cells to promote tumor angiogenesis, thereby ultimately helping the growth of the tumor. This is our uh, major finding and this was published recently in the paper in the journal eLife. Uh, as you know, uh, our work is about uh, glioblastoma, which is uh, one of the uh, uh, aggressive form of glioma at the brain tumors. And uh, the treatment for this uh, cancer uh, is really not great. To the extent uh, the, the current treatments uh, doesn't really help much. Most of the glioblastoma recur, and the median survival is still remains at about uh, 12 to 15 months. Okay. Uh, recently, there was an approach 
to develop a novel treatment by targeting a molecule called VEGFA, which is an inducer of angiogenesis. So while uh, the results uh, at laboratory level, including use of animal models, have uh, really uh, fared very well, uh, trials in the human patients actually uh, failed. Okay, one of the reasons uh, uh, the scientists who carried out this trial uh, uh, they mentioned that uh, possibility of uh, angiogenesis set up by other molecules, okay, other than the traditional angiogenesis which is host derived, could be the reason why anti VEGFA based therapies have failed. Okay, here is an example what we have identified that uh, differentiated cancer cells of glioblastoma can secrete factors like FMOD or fibromyalgia, which can also induce angiogenesis independently other than the host derived angiogenesis. Okay, so this gives uh, uh, additional approaches for targeting uh, aggressive tumors like glioblastoma. So hopefully in the times to come in the future, we may be able to control the uh, aggressive tumors like GBM, uh, but uh, time only will tell you uh, the possibilities. So, um, certainly, the pro project funded by uh, Seifra uh, has helped us to make this possible. And more importantly, at uh, uh, science level, uh, since one of the major objectives is to look at proteins which are secreted by the stem cells versus non cancer stem cell, and looking at proteins at a genome level is possible uh, only through a quantitative proteomic approach. Uh, in that sense, uh, the collaborator Philip Murray's laboratory uh, are uh, uh, quite well developed, uh, in a, they are uh, experts in uh, proteomics, so that, thereby uh, their expert, expertise helped us to look at proteomics of uh, the uh, secreted proteins between the stem cells and non-cancer stem cells and that made us possible to identify this uh, molecule fibromyalgia as a molecule which is essential for tumor growth even though it is secreted by the non-cancer stem cells. Uh, hi, I am Sriyoshi. I am a graduate student in Professor Kumar Somazundaram's lab in the MCB department of ISC. I joined in 2015 and uh, since then uh, I have been working on this project, collaborative project that got approved by Sefipra and the collaboration is with Dr. Philip Marin's lab from University of Functional Genomics in Montpellier, France. So the objectives of the project were to decipher the differentially abundant proteins between the cancer stem-like cells and the differentiated cancer cells. Now the cancer stem-like cells form a minute proportion of the tumor, but they are extremely important because they can initiate tumor formation, while the differentiated cancer cells form the bulk of the tumor, but their exact role in cancer development and progression was not known uh, for a long time. So we wanted to see whether they play an important role or not and at the same time how the cancer cells, the stem cells and the differentiated cells interact within themselves and with the tumor microenvironment to create a very comfortable niche for cancer growth. So uh, in collaboration with Dr. Philip Marin's lab, we carried out this high throughput non-tabled uh, proteomic investigation where we subjected the secretomes of the stem like cells and the differentiated cells to mass spec to identify the differentially abundant proteins and we were specifically in, uh, interested in looking at secreted proteins that are pro-angiogenic in nature because angiogenesis is one of the very important phenomena which is required for uh, providing nutrients for the cancer cells to grow and also we kept in mind the kind of unsatisfactory response of bevacizumab which was a therapy that was developed for uh, targeting VEGF which, which is a very known pro-angiogenic molecule in glioblastoma R model as well as in other cancers but since it failed in phase 3 clinical trials we it gave us a hint that there might be other pro-angiogenic factors that are playing a role in GBM uh, growth and development so while investigating the differentially abundant proteins, we found fibromodulin to be solely secreted by the differentiated cells, which made us uh, hypothesize that there is probably an important role of the differentiated cells. So it was previously shown by one of my colleagues from the lab uh, in a, a publication that got uh, accepted in Oncogene that uh, fibromodulin only helps in increasing the invasive potential of the cancer cells. It does not affect proliferation. But we saw that uh, fibromodulin increases angiogenesis by the endothelial cells that form the blood vessels. 
So in our investigation, we found out that uh, F mod activates integrin dependent NOT signaling in the endothelial cells to promote GVM uh, angiogenesis, and thereby it helps to create a very invasive as well as a very vascular GVM tumor. And we validated our findings in in vivo mouse models as well whereby we saw that if we silence GBM, the tumor burden decreases and also the number and size of blood vessels that are supplying blood to the uh, mice tumors are also less and of course the survival of the mice increase whereas in the groups where FMOD levels are high, the tumors are extremely vascular and the survival of the mice are also less. So in the process, we basically found out a novel molecule which can be a therapeutic target. Of course, it needs much more validation in terms of how to target this molecule, how to inhibit it in a clinical scenario. But we validated our findings from high throughput data sets that are publicly available to see that indeed uh, high FMOD level does uh, cause a lower survival whereas low FMOD levels does increase patient survival significantly. So we uh, from the major finding of our study is of course finding a novel therapeutic target which might uh, translate into a novel uh, anti-angiogenic therapy in GVM. Long live India and France friendship.